The Serious Fraud Office has launched an investigation in relation to donations made to the Labour Party in 2017. In a statement which was released in the past hour, the SFO says it's conducting four, it was conducting four investigations in relation to electoral funding and a fifth was now before the courts. Now, joining me now to discuss this is Otago University Law Professor Andrew Geddes. Andrew, a really short, sharp statement from the SFO. What do we know about this investigation and what may have prompted it? All we know is what the uh, Serious Fraud Office has said in its statement. Uh, It's basically following the past convention. So uh, when it's launched these investigations and the other uh, uh, episodes that it discusses, it's told the world we are doing this. So they've said, look, because we told the world in those past times we did it, we're doing it now. They don't say actually anything in their statement as to what the investigation is directly into yet. So... Is there any clues to whether it's related to any of the existing cases? Well, we can maybe surmise a little bit, and we have to be very careful that uh, we're surmising, so we're, we're drawing from possibilities. Two of the investigations that the Serious Fraud Office uh, has running are into Leanne Dalziel and Phil Goff, uh, ex-Labour Party cabinet ministers, in relation to how they raised money or got donations for their local body campaigns for the Mayor of Auckland and the Mayor of Christchurch, respectively. And what the Serious Fraud Office is looking at with regard to those uh, donations is the way that auctions were used to disguise the identity of donors uh, to those two candidates. So items would be auctioned, uh, allegedly at an inflated value, and the, the identity of who had bid on those things was not made clear. So you never got to see who actually paid the money for the items. Now, this is a tactic that the Labour Party itself has used at the national level uh, and was using in 2017. And there have been questions raised as to whether the Labour Party's technique uh, at those auctions was strictly in compliance with the Electoral Act. So it may well be that what the Serious Ford Office is looking at is the way that the Labour Party used this tactic, uh, given that it's already looking at how two ex-Labour Party cabinet ministers used that tactic. Understood. So let's just look at this a little bit more. In an auction situation, you're given an item from someone usually to raise money so first of all you've got the donor who's given you the item and then you have the purchaser what are the obligations in terms of declaring both the person who's given you the item to auction and the person who pays for it well the question in this situation is who you know who is the donor of value so there's the item that's given which is worth something Um, And the way it ought to work is whoever gives the item that's worth something is the donor of that something. And then if someone bids more than that worth, then they're the donor of the extra value above and beyond its worth. The problem is when you get to things like artwork, which has no inherent value. I mean, what is a painting worth? And what it appears uh, the Labour Party did was if they were given an artwork that sold for a certain amount at auction, they would say that the paint, the person who created the artwork was the donor of the full value. Even if someone had bid what seems to be quite a large amount of money more than the painting would usually sell for. And so what the Serious Sport Office may be looking at, and this is speculation, I, we don't know for sure, is whether or not uh, the, that was correctly reported, whether the Labour Party ought to have been reporting who was buying the thing for the extra amount above and beyond what it would sell for in your local gallery. Um, because if they haven't done that, then they may well have falsely reported their uh, donations to the Electoral Commission, which is an offence. So, to be clear, if you donate something, you're named as the donor. If that thing sells for more than what is considered market value, then there is a second donor that should be named for contributing that part of it. Without getting too complicated, there is a cap on what um, you can donate anonymously, right? So does it matter if the item, if the added value of that item is less than the disclosure cap, if you see what I'm saying? Quite. So if the, if, the added, if the added value of the item is less than $15,000, it doesn't need to be declared. So in other words, I give a book to an uh, auction. The book is only worth $50, but someone buys it for $10,000. Well, the 9,950 extra value doesn't have to be declared publicly because it's less than 15,000. But what can happen is that someone buys things at an auction over multiple items. So when you add all that extra value together, it get, becomes above 15,000 and so should be declared. And it's not clear whether that sort of thing was happening in these circumstances. 
All of this, of course, again, we have to say just speculation, but it may be the thing that's attracted the serious fraud officer's attention. OK, so they're, they're looking at the letter of the law, right? Mm-hmm. What about the ethical obligation here, in your view, in terms of transparency, what should be the situation? Because as you say, who knows really what the real value of a piece of art or an item that is donated is? Yeah, I mean, this is an area that I think has been used uh, as a, you know, quite a convenient way to basically hide the identity of donors for quite a while. Um, the Electoral Commission has apparently signed off on this and seen, said that, look, they, they regard this as being OK. Now, whether the Electoral Commission knows the full extent to you know, which this has been used, we don't know, because the Electoral Commission only knows what the parties tell them. And, of course, the Electoral Commission isn't the final arbiter of what the law is in this area. Uh, if the serious fraud office disagrees with the Electoral Commission, it can take its own independent action. Uh, But frankly, I think this is an area that really does need tightened up on quite considerably um, because, I mean, there's no doubt that uh, what we really need to be interested in is not an artist who's giving a painting to the Labour Party, but who is paying tens of thousands of dollars for that painting because that's the money that the party is then using. And if we don't know that, then we don't know who is giving the financial uh, financial, money cash that the parties are using to run, to, to run their campaigns. So these investigations seem to be coming pretty thick and fast at the moment. What do you make of that? Well, again, the Electoral Commission, which has the oversight of this area, is not an investigative body. So all it does is it receives the returns that parties send to it and takes them at face value. And it can only look at an issue if someone raises it with them, and then it can only ask the parties for information. It's got no ability to actually dig into the behind the parties, you know, uh, records and look to see whether they're accurate. The serious fraud office, having been involved first with, you know, the Jamie Lee Ross and national donations, and then with other donations uh, afterwards, actually has the capacity to go and look in an investigative manner at what is going on. And it appears once you actually start digging into the practices, you know, there seem to be problems. And at the minute, we've got, you know, only two of our parties are not under direct investigation by the Serious Fraud Office, which I don't think is something that anyone would have thought that, you know, would be the case in New Zealand. And we've got an election looming. So what difficulties does that pose? Because given the time that this takes, we're unlikely to get resolutions before people have to choose who they're backing at the ballot box. I think it's very likely that we'll go into the September election with an ongoing uh, investigation by the serious fraud office into the Labour Party. And they're going to have to live with that as a, you know, a political fact. Appreciate your time this evening. That is Andrew Geddes, who's a Otago University law professor, speaking there about the fact that the Serious Forward Office has launched yet another investigation into political donations. In this case, it's in relation to donations made to the Labour Party in 2017.